old Sneelock. Back in the day, before I had a workshop, I wanted to buy some tools and I didn't have much money. One of the things that I was trying to do is drill the barrel mount for a pistol and trying to do it with a handheld drill, I was making a horrible mess of it. So I thought drill press would make the problem go away. To do that, I ended up buying a Chinese knockoff. When I bought it, it was new. It was actually an operating piece of equipment. Uh, it wasn't a great piece of equipment, but it worked. Uh, I had it in the old barn. And the old barn, the one that's on the uh, initial pictures on this video, uh, the roof leaked. And it was the last year that I lived there. Uh, the roof leaked bad enough that it dumped water on top of this drill press and the drill press stopped functioning. So now if I press the start switch, nothing happens. So what I want to do, I wanted to give this to my son because he's in the same position. He's starting his own little workshop and he wants to have one. I have a big drill press out in the garage, but I want to keep that drill press and I have the hand operated drill press but I want to keep that too. So I was thinking this is one I can get rid of and not feel bad about. But before I can do that I have to make it work. So one of the first things we're going to do is diagnose what's wrong with this drill press. And I think it's something inside the switch. At least I'm hoping. If it's the motor, then I've got to replace the motor. One indication that the motor might be damaged. The motor is lined with insulation. And the insulation is supposed to be inside the motor, not melted and falling off. So we'll just have to see what happens. With the drill press unplugged, I'm going to look inside the switch and see what's going on in here. I'm of two minds about the switch. One, I would rather not have to repair it. because it's kind of a unique thing. But two, I would rather repair it than replace the motor because the motor is going to be harder to find. Oh, this is not a good thing. Inside the spindle, I'm finding corn. Now, how did corn get inside the spindle? A mouse. Mice just love to get into stuff. And what they do when they get into stuff is they eat and they piss. And when they piss, they corrode everything because their piss is acidic. They have screwed up a lot of lawnmowers for me by crawling inside the fan shroud on the motor. And when they do that, when they crawl inside the fan shroud, they eat the wires off from the coil and when they eat the wires off from the coil, the coil is not something that's easily repaired. Now this is a Chinese knockoff drill. It has soldered connections and the wires are taped up to insulate them. My friends the mice got in and chewed the wires. When that happened, I've shorted things out. And they've chewed on the wires here. 
I imagine they had a nest inside this drill press. And that nest allowed them to live inside there and do all kinds of nasty things. So perhaps it wasn't the water so much as having those little beasties in there that were causing the problem. But we'll see as we go along. I always like to start at the beginning and work my way down. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check continuity on the power line. To do the testing I'm going to use my multimeter. This is made by Amprobe and it's an analog meter. In other words, when you make contact, the needle moves. You can use digital ones. Digital ones work just as fine. But I prefer the analog ones just simply because it's what I grew up with and what I know. What I'm going to do is I put one probe into the plug so that it contacts only the one side. Then I come over to where the switch is and I test and see ah, that leg is the wire coming from that prong. Is there a short in the wire? Nothing going from the green line which is the ground Nothing coming from the black line, which is the power. This is Chinese. They're a little different. Normally a red would be a power line and a black would be a power line. And the green would be ground. But in this wire, they've used red and black wires and a green for ground. At least they've got the green right. So, I'm going to figure that the red wire is the power because the red wire goes to the switch and you always want to break the power side. You can stop things by breaking the neutral side, but if it shorts out and goes to ground, it'll start up again. If you break the power leg, then it, if it shorts out, all that's going to happen is it's going to blow a fuse. With the switch in the off position, I've got continuity on that leg, nothing on that one. With a switch on, I have continuity on the other leg. So let's go down here and check. Switch is on, I should be showing no continuity there, no continuity there. So that's good. Now I come over and switch to the other side and check again. I have continuity. That's the black wire coming up from the plug. That's the only place it's got power. We're good. So the switch is not the problem. Oh well. At least I don't have to replace the switch. Now we come to the motor. The motor is going to be a bit more difficult. With the insulation melting out of the motor, that's always a bad sign. Thanks for stopping by. We got a late start on this project, so we're going to hit it again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.